Why is my green tea brown? This is a thing people ask us quite often, and in this video, we're gonna tackle why that might be. You may see pictures and videos online of bright green teas, and you may be discouraged when you brew your own tea and notice this orange or brown color. Let's talk about what makes green tea green and why the tea that you're preparing might be brown or yellow. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're going to focus on the color of tea specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. Why is it called green tea? It's important to first start by explaining why it's called green tea. There are six different types of teas, and for the most part, they're categorized by color. White tea, yellow tea, green tea, oolong tea, red tea, and dark tea. All of these teas come from the same plant, Camellia sinensis, but they get their unique colors and flavors from different steps in the production process. Red tea, also known as black tea, is fully oxidized. When the tea leaves are picked, the enzyme oxidase will convert the catechins into theoflavins and theorubigans. This process is known as oxidation, and it's what changes these grassy or vegetable flavors into warmer notes of caramel and chocolate. To make a green tea, heat must be applied to the leaves almost directly after the harvest, which deactivates the enzymes. This allows the tea to retain more of its fresher, citrusy characteristics and its green color. The name green tea is a reference to the green leaves, not the color of the liquid itself. Compared to the leaves of white tea, oolong tea, red tea, and dark tea, the leaves of green tea are the most consistently green in color. Some oolong teas are green, but these are the ones that are the least oxidized. But there are still green teas out there that have a bright green color to them, so why is my green tea brown, you might be asking. We'll cover that in the next section. First, it's important to say that teas that are green in color are not necessarily higher quality than those that are yellow in color. There are plenty of great green teas that produce a golden yellow color, like this Kameidacha, for example. Kameidacha is one of the few Japanese green teas that is roasted in a large hot pan making it more similar to Chinese green tea. Chinese green teas all tend to produce a yellowish color, and most Japanese green teas produce a yellow color as well, but quite a few of them have these beautiful jade green colors. So what's happening here? The answer comes down to the color of the leaf and how much leaf material ends up in the cup of tea. The extreme case of this can be found with high quality matcha. Premium matcha is made from incredibly high quality leaves. They have been shaded for three weeks before the harvest, which increases the content of chlorophyll, which makes the leaves greener. Then the leaves have their stems removed before being ground into a fine green powder. Here you have an incredibly green powder being mixed directly into water, so it's no wonder that the tea turns out green. But why is a tea like Fukumushi Sencha green? As we mentioned before, most Chinese green teas are pan-fired, and they tend to produce a yellow color. Japanese green teas actually go through a steaming process to deactivate the enzymes. When you steam a leaf for a few seconds, like spinach for example, it actually becomes greener in color. The same thing happens to tea leaves when they are put through a short steam bath of between 40 to 80 seconds. What makes Fukumushi Sencha interesting is that it's actually steamed for a longer time, between 80 and 200 seconds. During this longer steaming process, the tea leaf gets broken down, allowing more of it to flow into the cup. You'll notice that Fukumushi Sencha is more brittle, which means you will find a larger amount of small leaf particles in the tea. Because these leaves have so much surface area, you only need 45 seconds to extract a lot of flavor, and of course, a bright green color. The lesson here is that to create a super green tea, you need the leaves to be very green in color, and you need to have more leaf particles in the final cup of tea. There's there's another type of Japanese tea that makes a green color, and it's called matcha iri sencha, or just matcha iri. This is made with a combination of sencha leaves and matcha powder. The Shizuku sencha is an example of this, and when you brew the tea for the first time, all of the matcha powder is released into the water to create a cloudy green infusion. The flavor is then balanced out by the sencha leaves, which gives more of a sweetness to the tea. This was designed to be the best tea for cold brew, producing a powerful, sweet, and fruity flavor. With regular sencha teas that do not go through the steaming process, you will notice some begin to go in a green direction like the Nuruki Shincha and the Henta Saimidori Sencha, but they will still be more of a yellowish green, or at least in the first brewing. There is nothing wrong with yellow green teas, but a green tea should never be orange or brown, except if it's been roasted. These brown or orange teas are usually coming from incredibly low quality tea leaves, like those used in tea bags or bottled tea. These tend to produce an extremely bitter and flat flavor, with none of the more complex tasting notes you get from premium teas. It is also possible to turn decent quality tea leaves into orange or brown tea if they are brewed brewed or stored incorrectly. We'll explain how in the next section. Brewing process. If you brew a sencha tea too hot, it is possible for it to go into the brown or orange direction. Not only will the color of the tea become more off-putting, but so will the flavor as well. When you use hot water, you extract more of the catechins, which are the components within the tea that are responsible for those bitter flavors. Some bitterness or astringency can be nice in a tea, but it can quickly overpower the taste if you have too much. If you use a lower temperature water, you get to experience all aspects of the tea. 
the natural sweetness, the subtle bitterness, the slightly astringent finish, and even more depending on the type of tea that you're drinking. We recommend to brew at a temperature between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius for Japanese green tea, which is between 140 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. When it comes to hardier teas like hojicha, bancha, and genmaicha, you can go for up to 80 degrees Celsius or 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Subsequent brewings. Make sure that you don't throw your tea leaves out after just one brewing. When you brew your tea leaves multiple times, you'll get a completely different flavor, but also a different color. The second brewing of teas, like the Fukumushi Sencha, are actually greener in color, and they often have this more powerful flavor. You will not get as sweet of a tea with the second brewing, but you will notice more of these strong steamed vegetable notes. In addition to having the tea color be affected by how you brew the tea, it can also be affected by how you store the tea. Green tea leaves are incredibly sensitive to light, heat, and humidity, and you need to store them properly to prevent the tea from going brown. Sunlight can destroy the color and flavor of a green tea quicker than you might think. If you leave a dish of bright green matcha powder out in the sun for just a short period of time, it will soon turn dull green, then yellow, then brown. This is why you should not store matcha in a glass jar, but rather in a metal tin to prevent the light from getting through. Heat. If you've ever baked with matcha powder, you'll know that the end product never turns out to be as green as you want it. This has to do with a few different factors, but one of them is the heat of the oven itself. An intense heat like this will quickly cause the color of the matcha to change. This is why tea producers will keep their tea in cold storage, and you may even want to keep your tea in the fridge or in the freezer. Aging. Even if you store your green tea well, after a few years it will just begin to turn brown. The tea leaves will eventually oxidize and turn brown in color. This is why it's important not to buy tea in too big of a quantity, and you really want to try to finish what you have rather than saving it for some point in the future. So there is one tea that seems to defy a lot of these concepts, and that's hojicha. It's made from green tea leaves, it's unoxidized, and it's steamed after harvest, and yet it's still brown. The reason for this has to do with the roasting process. Once the leaves are dried, they are put into a large pan or a rolling machine and turned over a high heat. This causes the color of the leaves to turn from green to brown, and the the flavor trays these fresh, steamed vegetable tasting notes for flavors of coffee and caramel. Instead of the yellow or green color you see with unroasted teas, hojicha takes on a reddish brown color. This is one of the cases where it's not a problem to have a green tea that is brown, as the flavor of a good hojicha can be delicious, particularly during the colder months. If your green tea is brown and it's not a hojicha, it may be time to get some new tea. It doesn't really matter what the color of your tea is, as long as you like the taste. We think that it's important to try a lot of different teas so you really get an understanding of which flavors you prefer. That's why we created our green tea samplers, which include some of the best teas we found from all over Japan. After traveling around Japan for the past few years, we've met with dozens of different farmers and sampled hundreds of different teas. We've compiled our 21 favorite matcha teas into the matcha tea sampler and our favorite 30 green teas into the mega sampler. These teas come from different regions, different farmers, and different tea plant varieties. It would really help support our channel if you could try out one of these samplers and let us know which tea is your favorite. Another way to support the channel is by leaving a like and subscribing so that you can see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions about green tea or tea in general, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.